It's like limestone that's been very high grade stuff. It's medically pure. But we've got various qualities of it throughout the highlands. And if water is in contact with it for a long time, the water changes. It becomes alkaline. And it picks up a lot of calcium out of the water. And then it travels underground and it stays in contact with that bedrock. Then the water bubbles up and it has very little oxygen in it. And it's got these calcium ions and it mixes with the vegetation in here. Veg rotting vegetation is very acidic. And it makes it either neutral or slightly alkaline. These are considered the rarest kinds of wetlands in the United States. It's because if it's got vegetation in it, it's acidic to some degree. This isn't. Consequently, you get things there you don't find other places. But here in the highlands, they are relatively common because we have so much of this calcium carbonate bedrock. And we didn't, I didn't realize we lived in such a special place. But there's a lot of neat stuff as a consequence. I'll try to get this right now. It's called a calcareous fan. Fancy word meaning it's slightly alkaline and neutral. Here is the long-winded explanation. I will read it to you. Calcareous fan. A peat accumulating wetland dominated by distinct groundwater. Inflows, that's the springs, having specific chemical characteristics. The water is characterized as circumneutral, a bat neutral, to alkaline, with a high concentration of calcium and low dissolved oxygen content. The chemistry provides an environment for specific and often rare hydrophytic plants, plants that like water. Okay. General rule when you're doing work or, or, or out of the forest or you're doing anything. If it is an odd place, you will find odd things. <laughs> Weird, huh? That's like overriding that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would say something nasty, but no, no we won't go there. So. <laughs> Mostly about the silk, of course. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, and, and equally, if you're in the forest or any place and you find odd things, it's probably an odd place, too. So it goes both ways. We're out walking there. This is a guy named Joe Rocchio. He works for the state. And it's his job to travel around the state to investigate odd places. <laughs> it is a, he's a wonderful man. He has helped us out so much. He thinks this is one of the more special places in Washington State. And we really have, uh, have enjoyed him so much as a person and what he's taught us. He's explained most of this to I'm not, I didn't do this on my own. He explained most of this to us. That said, Notice this right here. That is a fire-killed tree in the middle of the fan. A big weapon that you walk around and it sloshes. You got a fire-killed tree out there. You thought you had a drought this summer. Yeah, somewhere, sometime within our lifetimes, maybe a little older from some of the readers, that tree got killed by fire. So we haven't seen a drought yet, have we? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, there's certain things stand out to me. Plants, because that's my interest. I'm calling them signature plants. When I think Lost Lake, this wetland fan on the south end, these plants come to mind. There's that Bob Birch right there. Little round leaves, about the size of a, of a quarter. That was, I did it again, didn't I? About the size of a quarter. You can see the little birch cone there. And we're discussing whether this is a, species of plants aren't over here, and it looks, they all look exactly alike. And then there's a relative all over here, and they all look different, but exactly alike. It's a continuum. And then somebody somewhere drew a line and said, we're going to separate the species here and here. But they blur together. This one's somewhere in the middle. We're not sure what's going on. Then it's a bog birch. Pretty common out there. 
you have a lot of lodgepole pine. If you look at the ones in here that have a more rounded top, those will be lodgepole. And they, but most of these are real pointed tops. Those are England spruce. <coughs> this is what the sedge fan looks when you're walking around out there. First time we went out there, it had short rubber boots, no problem. I now go out in waders, and we avoid the wet, the deep spots. Plant you probably don't see very often. This is elegant death canvas. You get back in there, it looks like a huge multi-leafed onion plant, or maybe like a daylily with, with a, you know, in a, in a bunch. Gorgeous flower. Each one of these is bigger than a quarter. Yeah, it's death canvas. It's poisonous. Yeah. Yes, ma'am? Why is it called death canvas? <laughs> you eat it, you die. <laughs> yeah, and, and you, there's, a, there's a, a regular one that grows in our dry places out here. And if it's overgrazed, then, then cows or horses would run out of food. And they'll, and they'll as a last resort, when they, when they can't get food, they will try to eat one of these. And it kills them. And it doesn't take much. It has a little bulb on it. And if you don't know what you're getting, like we have a little blue bellflower that's a brodea, that's an edible bulb. Well, if you don't know the difference between the two, this one will kill you. That other one's edible. And so you do have to be really careful with this stuff. Um, so so that's, it's a very pretty flower. <laughs> pretty, I don't want to test that theory, though. Nicholas spruce. This one's this picture's a little better. You notice this tree here that has a more rounded top? That's a lodgepole. The spires are England spruce. They're really common around Lost Lake.